you know what's so annoying about that loss? That neither team has Patrick Marlowe or their first round pick? What? No, I, I don't even remember what I was gonna say now. Thanks, thanks for your contribution. Hi, kids. Victorious puppy. Huh? This team is ruining my life. Why do I watch hockey? Stress relief, hopefully. We can oh, and oh, we will. Oh, Lose five to two to the San Jose Sharks in San Jose. You know, I was pretty mad last night, but I've had exactly three hours to think it over. Why do they gotta play 10 30 games? Hear me out. The West Coast should be illegal. There you go. What if we just move the West Coast closer? Have we ever thought of that? It's 2020. Come on. Climate change is like, gotcha, fam. Thanks, climate. Wait. Before we talk about that infuriating game, this stat is beyond stupid ridiculous. Last night, or maybe it was earlier this morning, freaking California trip, this is the first Leaf Sharks game to not feature Patrick Marlowe in over a decade, right? I tweeted that because, with the exception of the few games he missed at the beginning of the season because he was a free agent, Patrick Marlowe has not missed a hockey game because he was a scratch or injured in over 10 years. The answer is actually more ridiculous. From Sportsnet Stats, this was the first Leaf Sharks game to not feature Patrick Marlowe since March 26th, 1997. Brandon Convery was the first star for Toronto that night. Nearly 20 Three years ago. You want to see how much hockey's changed and why we called this the dead puck era? Here's the scoring summary at the top. Brandon Convery's second of the season. Matt Sundin shorthanded his 39th. And Darren Turcott gets the lone goal for the San Jose Sharks. Here are the penalties. Ty Domi, Doty Wood, Bob Airy, Jason Padolin, Doty Wood, Kelly Chase, Todd Warner, who was on the panel for Sportsnet last night. Kelly Chase, Kelly Chase, Kelly Chase. Two, five, and ten. Doty Wood, Doty Wood. I hope I'm saying that guy's name right. I don't I don't know. Whatever. Tim Hunter, Marcus Ragnarsson, Wendell Clark, Matt Martin. Wait, that's a, that's even a different Matt Martin. Jason Smith, Todd Ewan, Rob Zettler, Steve Sullivan, Tony Granato, Tony Granato again. That game featured three 10 minute misconducts, four fights, and at least one fight per period, and exactly 100 penalty minutes. One game. For the younger crowd, this is why they always say, like, oh, fighting is part of the game. It used to be most of it. Look at Matt, what a chump scoring goals, not even fighting. Yeah, I mean, at least it was a shorthanded goal. Well, that is the toughest goal to score, it's true. Anyway, enough about 23 years ago, let's talk about this game. I've had 45 minutes to sleep and think about it, and, um... Ah, not bad. It was okay. The Leafs should be able to beat the Sharks. That's that's what it is. They should be able to beat the Sharks, especially when they get a goaltending performance like that from Jack Campbell. And Martin Jones has been brutal for a long time now. I don't know what's happened to him. He was absolutely spectacular in this game. He's been spectacular for over a week now. And I've been mad about the Leafs' inconsistent performance, especially in this game from period to period, and it's true. They were awful in the second period. Leafs out shoot the Sharks 14 to 11 in the first, that's good. 18 to six in the second, what are you even doing? And seven to nine in the third, yeah, whatever, whatever. Here's how bad it was. From CJ, San Jose holds a 25 to five edge in even strength shot attempts during the second period. Jack Campbell keeping this a game. No kidding, Jack Campbell's keeping this a game. How much is he keeping this a game? The second period was the only period where the Leafs outscored the Sharks. They outscored them 2-1. to one. So, the Leafs played abysmally in the second period, which is unfortunately a trend that we've seen recently. The Leafs tied it up in the second. They tied it up. They allowed a power play goal in the first, which... I suppose is gonna happen, and their PK's been good recently. And the Stefan Nason goal in the third period, which ended up being the game winner? Stupidest, flukiest bounce off the end boards you're ever gonna see. So, it's not as appealing, it's not as fun, and it definitely doesn't get as many views, but... I don't know, I'm thinking that might be an acceptable loss. Or at least a loss where you give credit to the San Jose Sharks. You have to give credit to them. Could the Leafs have done better? Of course they could have done better. They lost, but they've had worse losses than that. Jack Campbell made more saves than Martin Jones. I would love to see what the scoring chances were because to me, at least from the second and third period, it felt like the scoring chances, like the real good ones, were 
close to even. Jones made a couple that ruined my night, frankly. And after all the smack I've talked on the podcast and in the Dangits videos, I kind of deserve it. The power play goal, I mean the Sharks power play seems pretty simple. Get it to Brent Burns and have him fire the puck until stuff starts falling out of his beard. And it was unpleasant taking shots and Campbell stopping it, Marincin whacking it away, and the Leafs almost clear the puck and a puck hits Marner in the face and they gotta continue. And look, the penalty kill, I mean you're outnumbered, right? Nothing's ever gonna be perfect. Marincin was doing his job clearing the puck and Marner and Hyman doing a good job swarming the blue line there. I just felt like Justin Hall's assignment there is to move Evander Kane. That's your job. And when Brent Burns put the second, third, fourth, ninth, whatever it was, shot on net, I, I don't even know if Hall had a hand on Kane. And Travis Dermott in the box for that one, he takes a lot of minors, man. But you know what? Despite that, watching him, especially over the last few games while uh, everybody's been out, I was saying Dermott could be a trade chip. I was saying he's been setting money on fire. Some of those things are still true, but like, man, there's such a player in Travis Dermott waiting to emerge. I don't know what his numbers were like in this one. I can't imagine they were good. I can't imagine too many guys in this team were good, but he's so belligerent and he doesn't care about the other team's feelings and he's so talented. Oh, I just, uh, that guy's going to score a big playoff goal for the Leafs. I, I just, I have a feeling. It's going to take one moment and we're going to watch something special happen with that player. I, I just feel it. So the Leafs, arguably the better team in the first period. They come out of it losing. What do you got to do? Have a good start to your second and they at least have that less than three minutes in marty marincin with a good keep at the blue line and just throws it on and this is why i hate when people cite shooting percentage at the blue line oh it's only got like a two percent chance at yeah the shot does did it look like marty marincin was shooting to score there i've sneezed faster than that and this is where you leave a comment about how fast sneezes are and actually that's really fast shut up i've been to the science center i know i'm talking about hockey stop marty marincin slow flimmy sneeze on net there's a rebound austin matthews that's all it had to be. Bloop. And that's what you're hoping for when you take a slow, flamey sneeze from the point. You're just hoping for a bang and rebound, which is exactly what Austin Matthews got. His 46th of the season. He's a little bit good. But of course, less than two minutes after that goal, if you look at the top of the screen there, right by the Sharks bench, I think that's Austin Matthews going off for a change. I'm not totally sure. It's obviously blurry. But he doesn't see another Shark coming off of the bench. I think there's a couple, actually, and it leads to the Sharks having an odd man rush. Or actually, even watching it again, it's three on three, but there's two Sharks right where the puck ends up. Whether you think it's a bad line change or just bad luck, it turns into a fire drill for the Sharks. Jack Campbell makes some stops and then of course Ansi Swamela who has three career NHL goals at least heading into this game scores number four from below the goal line because of course at the time 1607 which is close to 1967 no it's not I'm going to therapy banks it in off Jack Campbell it's two on Sharks numbers are important they help you evaluate uh, uh, off-season training uh, makes you a better player uh, training during the season diet eating right all sorts of things factor into you becoming a great hockey player, but at the end of the day, the stupid thing is a piece of vulcanized rubber. Here's a pro tip. If you wake up with nightmares, if you're having issues with that, just leave a puck by your bed. Folks, it's true. This revolutionary piece of sleeping technology eats your dreams and spits them in your face. So go to bed, get a restful sleep, and then it also doubles as an alarm clock. Hockey, it doesn't care. Speaking of it doesn't care, the period gets way worse after that. Because the sharks are just kicking the leaves up and down the ice. And here's the thing, you can't just kick people up and down the ice. That's against the rules. And when you do something against the rules, you have to be punished. So Mitchell M. Marner, I choose to believe his middle name starts with an M, decided to confiscate Brent Burns' jock. Austin Matthews, excellent cheeky little move just to keep the puck on side, and he rushes in with Marner. Marner receives it on his forehand, tucks it between his legs before Brent Burns even knows where the thing is onto his backhand. Oh, he's gonna shoot it, so oh, Martin Jones is gonna stop it. No! Five hole! Mitchell! Magic! Monstrous! The Leafs have tied the game! Do you feel that? Do you feel the energy? Even though the Sharks outplayed the Leafs in the second, it's tied! Try your hardest, follow your dreams, nothing is impossible! Puck takes a funny bounce off the boards less than six minutes into the third period, and Stefan Nason scores his sixth of the season for the game-winning goal. And if that puts you in a bad mood, how about the Evander Kane insurance marker 50 seconds later on a partial break? Wrap it up with an empty netter from Radim Simek, a guy who exists, for sure he exists, and the Leafs lose 5-2. Joy is... So very fleeting. Maybe we can solve this in the questions. Maybe we can solve this. I can never tell if I should be concerned or if everything is fine with the Leafs. How should I be feeling right now? Okay, 
This is just my observation and I hope no one takes it personally. As you have seen from me hitting, you know, a variety of octaves, the least make me upset sometimes. When everyone was talking about, oh, maybe we'll get Matt Dunbar, or maybe this and that, I have said that the Leafs are more than a move away. Like, as if that's the only thing I've been wrong about ever, or this season. The Leafs, without Riley and Muzzin, and holy smokes, do they actually miss CeCe a lot. The Leafs, without all these guys, I think they've shown good character. And Sheldon Keefe did not play Rasmus Sandin in this one, and I actually don't mind that. He's 19, a lot of 19 year olds get to watch games from the press box. Timothy Liljegren getting back into the lineup. I, I actually liked his game in this one. But as the game wore on, you started to see like, okay, Sandine's been doing a little bit more sinking than swimming, but they miss him. But for the most part, I think the Leafs have the potential to be a scrappy team that has some high end skill. And if you just make it into the playoffs, you never know what's gonna happen. Look at Tampa last year, etc, etc. But what is driving me nuts about the way people talk about this team is you have an opinion that will not be swayed by anything you see. It's, it's just your opinion. And it ranges from their garbage and fire Kyle Doofus. And the people who say stuff like that just never have good chirps, ever. But then just as insufferable are the people who are like, no, they're great! No matter what! What? They got shelled and gave it away repeatedly? I bleach never happened! I'm swayed by smaller sample sizes, and some people think that's stupid, and that's fine. And I understand the whole concept of longer sample sizes, and it gives you a better idea of the picture. Too many things change on a dime in this sport. Oh, this team looks great! Janssen's out. What were you saying? Sorry. Oh, this team looks great! Mikheyev's out. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, this team looks- Riley's out. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, this team- Muzzin's out. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, this team- Cece's out. What were you saying? And it goes and goes and goes. And this guy's out hurt. And this guy's playing hurt. And this guy's playing sick. And this guy's dealing with something at home. And this guy- you just don't know. I am liking what I'm seeing more than I did a couple weeks ago. And I know, oh, I'm letting a couple weeks and they won four or five sway my decision. I don't care. To me, they're playing differently. You don't have to think that. That's fine. I just, all I'm imagining is the Leafs are going to win the cup in June and it's going to be great and everyone's going to be so happy and a bunch of people are going to unearth all these tweets from December and be like, look at this idiot. As if December has anything to do with June. I'll end with this. To me, the most frustrating and encouraging thing about this Leafs group is that they have more to give. How tired are you after staying up to watch that game? Not. I am not tired, but we have the Pentacle Pizza Steve Dangle podcast later today, and I'm sure I will be. If you could be any Pokemon, what one would you choose? I'd be Articuno. Legendary, I can fly, and free ice. Just want to say, Campbell is a sweetheart and would blame himself for anything. Part of me wonders about that. Jack Campbell makes like nearly 40 saves, and oh, you know, I just, I, I feel like I, I gotta take the blame for this one. I know the Leafs love him, but I just want to know if the guy sitting in the stall next to him listening to that interview was like, shut up. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe. If you really like to tell all your friends that I am going to be in Peterborough on Saturday at the Pete's game, come watch Nick Robertson with me and SDA and Liam Kirk and all the other ones. Like I said, Peterborough Pete's game this Saturday. But Steve, there's a Leaf game. No, there isn't. Not this Saturday. Ha ha. So, Peterborough Pete's game. Get a ticket. Let's watch some hockey. Uh, I'll have books there. I'll sign them. I'll sign your face if you ask me to. Just come to Peterborough.